The Tanglewood boys were essentially a group of suburban brats. In contrast to normal suburban brats, some of their fathers were wise guys. Their favorite meeting spot was outside the deli in the parking lot of the Tanglewood Shopping Center located at Central Park Avenue in Yonkers, New York. Hence the name, the Tanglewood Boys. At the forefront of this crew was Alfred Freddy Boy Santarelli, whose father, Anthony Blue, was a Lucchese captain. Freddy Boy's right-hand man was Darren Mazzarella. A few more of the well-known Tanglewood members, besides Freddie Boy and Mazzarella, were Johnny Boy Petroselli, Anthony DeSimone, Nicholas Mazzarella, Eric Tofty, Craig De Palma, Pasquale Parello Jr., Michael Chunk Londonio, and Stevie Crea Jr., just to name a few. This young crew of guys would often frequent nightclubs in Westchester and the Bronx, with most nights ending in fights. They carried themselves with an air of invincibility because of who their fathers were. Most of the Tanglewood crew were associated to Anthony Blue, specifically with the gambling racket. Law enforcement considered the Tanglewood boys as a Lucchese farm team. In the areas of which they stood, in Yonkers and the Bronx, you also had associates of other families. And whenever you have groups of young Italians living in the same proximity, by no means are they going to live in harmony. The Petroselli brothers began running wild following the death of their father, Lucchese member Johnny Fatface. On September 13, 1989, he was killed by a childhood friend, Joey Blue Eyes Costantino. Three years later, Joey Petroselli and his friends, 16 and 17-year-olds, were at the Windows Bar in New Rochelle on March 8, 1992, when an argument took place outside with another group of teens. The Petroselli group, which supposedly included Darren Mazzarella, were waiting for a friend to pull up with their car, and when the car pulled up, Petroselli reached in and came out with a gun and fired into the other group of teens, killing 16-year-old Cassim Merchant. Petroselli and his friends fled the scene, but were pulled over near the Bronx River Parkway in Westchester at around 3 a.m. Petroselli was arrested and eventually received a 17-to-life sentence for Merchant's murder. That same year, in February 1992, some of the Tanglewood boys, including the Mazzarella brothers, were at a house party in Tuckahoe, New York, when an older Gambino associate named Vincent Russell began teasing Nicholas Mazzarella. Mazzarella grabbed the guy by the throat and choked him to unconsciousness. Another one of the Tanglewood boys stabbed Russell in the neck with a kitchen knife. Darren Mazzarella quickly cleaned up the crime scene and then helped wrap the body up, which they placed in a van and drove into the city. They left the van and the body on the Upper West Side. In the early hours of February 4th, 1994, college student Louis Valencio and a friend of his went out to the Strike Zone Bar at 1548 Central Park Avenue in Yonkers. At some point during the night, he left the bar to go outside because friends of his were having a problem with the bouncer who wouldn't let them in. At the same time, there was a group of Albanians arguing with some Irish guys. A few of the Tanglewood boys, specifically Anthony DeSimone, Darren Mazzarella, and Eric Tofty, were also at the strike zone that same night. Hearing the commotion outside, they went out into the street to see what was going on. At that point, there was an all-out brawl, and naturally they joined in. The fact that Albanians were involved only fueled their rage. The previous year, on April 23, 1993, an Albanian shot and killed Pasquale Perello Jr., their friend and fellow Tanglewood member. So they jumped right in, and at one point, DeSimone produced a knife and stabbed the guy 13 times. The victim's friend, William Brown, was also stabbed in the arm. According to Mazzarella, DeSimone then chased another guy through a nearby parking lot, but gave up the chase. When they got into DeSimone's car, he reached onto the seat and came up with a gun, which he pointed at anyone in the crowd that was running towards their car. They headed back to Mazzarella's apartment, and while on an overpass, they threw the knife out the window. DeSimone later stated that he killed one of the Albanians, but Mazzarella informed him, that kid you killed, I don't think he's Albanian. I think it's a friend of one of the younger guys. It turns out Valencio was not an Albanian. At this point in time, 
the Tanglewood boys and their crimes in particular came to the attention of Daily News reporter Mike McClary, who wrote numerous articles about them. McClary had an inside confidential source, codenamed Jack, and the majority of Jack's information was on the money, although some of the facts were incorrect, whether deliberately or not. According to Jack, Eric Tofty helped Valencio while DeSimone repeatedly stabbed him, which may be true, as we'll hear about in a few moments. They arrived at the apartment around 3 a.m. Mazzarella called his brother and told him to come over immediately, which he did. They bandaged DeSimone's hand, and then Mazzarella foolishly called the strike zone and spoke to one of the owners, who warned him, tell Anthony to get out of there, that kid's dead. Valencio died a short time after the incident. Freddy Boy, who was Mazzarella's roommate, came into the apartment a short time later. They explained to him what took place, and he suggested that they remove their clothes. De Simone was wearing jeans, a sweater, and a leather jacket, and Tofty had on a sweatsuit. Both their clothes were still wet with blood. Freddy Boy handed them two plastic trash bags to put their clothes in. He took the bags, De Simone's gun, and the $100,000 in cash that they had in the apartment just in case the cops showed up. But instead of going to a garbage dumpster and depositing the bags, Freddy Boy went to a payphone and called his father. A few hours later, FBI agent David Kalor was parked in the parking lot of a white castle on Brooklyn Boulevard in the Bronx. He watched as a white Mercedes pulled in and also parked. In the car was a man and a woman, and after a while, the man exited the car, was looking around nervously, and threw a bag in the dumpster and got back into the car. Not long after, he got out of the car again and threw another bag away. The agent, naturally suspicious, ran the guy's plate, which came back registered to Anthony Santarelli. The agent, who worked organized crime cases, knew who Santarelli was and figured he was just getting rid of gambling receipts. When Anthony Blue left the White Castle, the agent, who was now joined by another agent, retrieved the bags from the dumpster and discovered the bloody clothing. Initially, they figured the clothes had to do with a mob hit, but there were none reported. It was only after sending the clothes to the FBI crime lab in Quantico, Virginia, that they learned that the blood matched Valencio's and DeSimone's. After Freddy Boy left them, Mazzarella took DeSimone to one of their friends' house. DeSimone had spoken to his father, Sally Bow, who was also a Lucchese captain, and his father sent someone to pick his son up. Before leaving, DeSimone told his friends, See you in 10 years, boys, and went on the lam that same night. That same year, Freddy Boy, Darren Mazzarella, and another friend, possibly Tofty, went to a college bar called the Anchor Bar on Amsterdam and 83rd Street on the west side of Manhattan. According to Mazzarella, at some point that night, a black bouncer walked over to them and said something to the effect that he wasn't in the mood for them. This turned into an argument, one that carried out outside. Another bouncer got involved, and they all began fighting. The Tanglewood boys got the best of the bouncers. During the fight, Freddy Boy pulled the bouncer's shirt over his head, and as he did, they seen that the guy was wearing a badge on a chain. Also, a gun he had in a shoulder holster fell to the ground. The guy was an off-duty MTA cop. Freddy Boy picked up the gun before they ran away, which he wound up tossing in some bushes a few blocks away. They all jumped into different cabs and left Manhattan. Unfortunately, another young guy from Yonkers, Joey Lebrano, was picked out of a lineup, even though he wasn't a member of the Tanglewood Boys. Lebrano would ultimately be convicted for assault and robbery involving that incident, and I believe he was sentenced to 15 years. I was away with Lebrano in Fishco Correction Facility while he was serving time for that case. Around the time of the incident, Law enforcement, acting on information supplied by Jack, raided a bookmaking operation near Yankee Stadium in the Bronx and arrested Mazzarella. In May 1995, Freddie Boy and Darren Mazzarella had a meeting with the Cosentino brothers, Joseph and Adam, whose father was Joey Blue Eyes, mentioned earlier. The meeting took place at a bar on Pelham Parkway in the Bronx, allegedly owned by Vinnie Gorgeous. The Cosentino brothers were working for a rival bookmaker, and that's what the beef was supposedly over. The meeting quickly went sideways, with the Cosentino brothers getting hit with bottles and their car being shot at. According to Jack, 
the Tanglewood boys were infamous for hitting people with beer bottles and glasses and bars. The next set of events would forever change the lives of the Tanglewood boys. As I mentioned in the beginning, young Italians living in close proximity cannot live in harmony due to too much bravado and egos clashing. A few members of the Tanglewood boys were hanging out at Loretto Park in the Morris Park section of the Bronx. A Genovese associate, Gene Gallo, pulled up in his convertible Mercedes. Gallo was a big earner who supplied Genovese members with money that they used for loan sharking. Johnny Boy Petroselli, upon seeing Gallo, threw a bottle at him, but Gallo just got back into his car and left. He returned a short time later with Genovese associate Michael Hippie Zanfadino, who was with Ralphie Coppola's crew. Zanfadino wanted to know who threw the bottle. Petroselli admitted to doing it, and Zanfadino was pissed because Gallo was with him and with their crew. Darren Mazzarella, who was also present, wanted to go retrieve a gun from Petroselli's car. So he announced that someone just beeped him and began walking in that direction. But Zanfadino caught the move and walked up behind Mazzarella and said to him, Hey, how's Freddy Boy doing? Give him my best. When Mazzarella went to turn around, Zanfadino shot him 14 times. Petroselli and Tofty put Mazzarella in the car and took him to Jacoby Medical Center. When they left the hospital, they went looking for Zanfadino and Gallo. Petroselli spotted Gallo's cousin, Paul Cicero, outside PS-108, also in the Bronx, and went over to him and stabbed him in the stomach while telling him, give this to your cousin. Cicero died two hours later, also at Jacoby Medical Center. Mazzarella learned of what took place while he was in the hospital. The following day, Lucchese underboss, Stevie Crea, sent for Petroselli and explained to him that the Genovese family were insisting that Zanfordino not be touched. Days later, acting bosses Joe DeFiti and Bonnie Belomo met in Manhattan. Belomo again stressed that he didn't want any acts of revenge on Zanfordino, and DeFiti agreed. When Mazzarella was discharged from the hospital, he went to a meeting with Anthony Blue and his son Freddie Boy in Manhattan. They met with Ralphie Coppola and Zanfordino, and Mazzarella had to shake hands with the guy who shot him. During the meeting, Coppola admitted up until the point of Cicero stabbing, the Tanglewood boys were in the right. Just a quick reminder to please like this video. And anyone who'd like to show their appreciation for this podcast and videos like this, you know what to do. On December 10th, 1996, Darren Mazzarella was charged with Balencio's murder and tampering with evidence. And by August of 1997, he began cooperating with the FBI. After pleading guilty to several crimes and serving some time, he and his brother were placed in the witness protection program. They used Mazzarella as a witness at Johnny Boy Petroselli's trial. Joe DeFiti also testified about his sit-down with Barney. After being convicted, in February 2003, Petroselli was sentenced to life. Prior to going to prison, he was inducted into the Lucchese family. Mazzarella had told the FBI about several murders that Petroselli was involved in. On January 28, 2002, Zanfordino was arrested in regard of two attempted murders, one of which was Mazzarella, and extortion. He pled guilty in January 2004 and served 15 years, and he also was inducted into the Genovese family. Anthony De Simone turned himself in in 1999 after hiding for five years. After being convicted at trial, he was originally sentenced to 25 to life for the murder and one in the third to four for evidence tampering. However, after serving seven years, his conviction was overturned on appeal and he pled guilty to manslaughter in the second degree and was released shortly after with time served. In 1998, Anthony Blue, his son Freddie Boy, and Tofty were charged with evidence tampering. In February 1999, Anthony Blue received one and a third to four years, and Freddie Boy and Tofty pled guilty in federal court for the tampering charges. Freddie Boy also pled guilty to the 1994 assault and robbery, which Lebrano was convicted of, and a 1989 extortion charge. Tofty pled guilty to interfering with the investigation involving the 1992 murder of Vincent Russell. Freddie Boy was also inducted into the Lucchese family. In the final outcome, that basically was the end of the Tanglewood Boys. 
I'll end on a lighter note. In 1998, when the police showed up at Anthony Blue's house in Harrison, New York at 6 a.m., he was extremely upset that his dog never alerted him to law enforcement approaching his house. When one of the cops asked what breed of dog it was, he replied, it's a Mastiff today, it's a dead dog tomorrow.